In the previous exercises, we created our site model. But what we'd really like to do is to see our site in relation to the context. In other words, in relation to the other properties. If we go back to our other layer, the site scan, you'll see there were several other properties in the neighborhood. You can see them all there. And what we'd like to do is to rotate our view to make it easy to draw these other properties because these properties might have an effect on our site. This is our actual site here. We're going to put two houses in here. So what about this house here? This might be two stories high. Does it cast a shadow on our building? What about these ones? Do these cast a shadow? So let's start to create our plan. This button's going to help a lot. Rotate plan tool. So click on the rotate plan tool. Click on the corner of the site. Click on the other corner of the site and Vectorworks will rotate the view so that that line that you just created is now square on the page. So this gives us the ability to zoom in and trace over these buildings. I find it easy to rotate the site and then use the rectangle tool to create the outline of my buildings. After you've created your two rectangles, you could select them both, right click and use Add Surface. That will join them together. If you need to edit the shape, you can always use your reshape tool and you can stretch that shape to suit. I like to hold down the back quote key that disables the snapping. Now it's time to draw these other shapes. For example, this particular building here, I might hold down the back quote key so that I don't accidentally snap to things. And a little bit of area there. And that area there. And each time I'm holding down the back quote key to disable the snapping. Add those together, double click. This time, what about using the reshape tool in the minus mode to take away that part? Let's zoom into this area here. So now what I'm going to do is to create a lot of my areas that I need. So there's that one and that area and this area here as well. And I'm using a combination of drawing and holding down the back quote key. The back quote key is great for disabling the snapping because you might notice you're snapping onto the site model there. So hold down the back quote key and there's a bit of a house in here. There's also a part there and there's also a part here. There's another building here. So that building, there's another part to it there and there's a part to it out here as well. So that gives us some of our context. I'm going to use my Select Similar tool. I'm going to choose Objects. Click on that. It'll select all of my rectangles. Right click, Add Surface. And you notice it's added a whole lot of them together. So that's a really quick way to do it. The next part that we want to do is to turn these shapes into massing models. So let's select all those and that one as well. A you see on the menu bar and create objects from shapes. What kind of shape do we want to make? Well, we really want to make a massing model. There it is there. We're going to delete the source shapes and we're going to show the properties. Now the properties dialog box allows us to type in the name to sh what we want to see, what do we want to show, what height are these, these are about six and a half meters high, there are two floors all of these and what about the walls. We haven't got the classes that we need, so we need to create some. Click New on the menu bar and create a massing model class for the walls, roof, for the existing and for the proposed. I've already created those, so you'll notice when I go to site here, I've got massing model, I've got walls existing. These are going to be a pitched roof maybe. Maybe it's a flat roof, eave overhang zero, the roof thickness about six inches. What about a roof for these? Site, massing model, roof existing. Roof slope, very shallow, just a couple of degrees. And we could make that a pitched roof if you want. We're not going to use site modifiers. We're not going to use grade limits. Click OK. 
So that creates my buildings. It does not put those buildings on the site model, so I need to move those to the site model. And when I go to the site model layer and have a look, let's just turn our view, those objects are not sitting on the site model. What I need to do is to send those to the site model. AEC, terrain, and center surface. And the center surface will command will take a part of that massing model, usually the origin of the massing model, and it'll lift it up so it sits on the site. So we've got our houses, and we've got them sitting on the site. Next thing we need to do is to add a sun. Just before we do that, I'm going to go back to a top plan view. I'm going to go to my visualization tool set, and we're going to look for the Heliodon tool. The Heliodon tool has got a lot of settings, so let's just have a look to see what they are. We can choose our region. You might find it starts off in USA, and then choose your country. In this case, we're going to choose India, and then we can choose our city. Now, if your city's not listed here, you can create it. Click on Edit City, type in the name, put in the latitude and longitude and the time zone, click on the Add button that will add that city to your list of standard cities. Chennai is already there, so that's what I'm going to use. Click OK. So there's my Heliodon. If I double click, it'll put the Heliodon in for me. And we've got the time of day, 9 o'clock in the morning. What if we make it 10 o'clock? What if we make it 12 o'clock? What if we make it 1500 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon? And you can see the arrows here changing. Not only that, but it actually casts the sun or a shadow across our site. So let's go to view on the menu bar, choose rendering, and let's choose OpenGL. And then I'm going to set my OpenGL options. I want very high detail. I want to draw the edges. I also want to use shadows. Click OK. So there are my shadows from my buildings at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. What about 1600 hours? And you can see the shadows starting to get quite broad across there. They're getting quite wide. What happens if we go to solstice, June? There are my shadows. What about December? Shadows are much longer. We can also create a solar animation. We are going to create solar animations, but I'd like to do it after I've put my house on there. So that's just a quick introduction to the Heliodon tool. It's this icon here, this little Mercedes-Benz icon. When you go back to a top plan view, you'll actually see that. So there we are, there's our buildings. There they are on our site. You can see they're quite large because they're two stories high. We want to put our two story houses in here. We're going to actually create one house but put two copies of it. Let's go back to our floor because we're going to create an outline of our building. Now the building's about 9 meters by 9 meters, less a bit for a car. So I'm going to start with a rectangle. I'm going to create that about 9 meters across, 9m, and 9 meters that way. I need to take a little bit out for where the car is going to go. I know I need to put a car in here. I need to take out about 3 meters. Otherwise, I can't park my car in there. Now, this object is just a polygon at the moment, but we want to turn it into something which is three-dimensional. We're going to make this into a space object. AEC, create objects from shapes, and this time we're going to make a space. Click OK. So here are our settings for our space. We really do need to look at our settings in detail. So at the moment, I'm just going to click OK. And now we're going to look at our settings in detail. Let's start with our numbering. So numbering is going to be a counter only. It's just going to keep a track of our numbers. Occupancy. We could put in all kinds of information about the space name, about the different rooms, what they're used for. What about our 2D boundaries? We want to see our 2D boundary. 3D boundaries, we certainly want to see this. 
and we're going to use our layer wall height for our layer. Now we could use the finished floor of the story above. That would work really well. Here it is here, finished floor of the story above. So this will actually calculate from our current story to the story above 1200. If you remember, we set up our stories earlier on. We set up our story as 1200 millimeters. So that works pretty well. What about our space label? We haven't got a space label yet. Let's just have a look here. What kind of label do we want? How about just a simple one line tag? It's going to have a space number and a space name. Let's go back to occupancy and we can put in a space name here. We haven't got one that we want to use, so I'm going to use a custom one, call it Foundations. We've got our 3D boundary, we've got our space label, we don't need a leader line, what kind of attributes do we want, and we could start to create some attributes for our space objects that we can turn it on and off when we want to. So space main, what about that for a class? And we can set classes for the boundaries and then click OK. So that's our space, it's on the space main class which will give us the ability to turn that off when we don't want to see it. And there's our first object. Let's copy that object and let's go to the next layer up which is our second floor. Edit, paste in place. Now you might notice when I pasted this one, it actually grew in height. And it grew in height because it's connected to the finished floor of the story above. What about when we go to the third floor and we go paste in place? Now you might notice that because of the height, because of the elevation of it, here the 3D display is the finished floor of the floor above, but that doesn't exist. I'll just make this wider so you can read it. Finish floor of the floor above, it's not working, so we're going to go layer wall height and that'll give us our approximate building. The net height is about three and a half meters because it has to include the parapets and all the roof structure. So let's have a look at that. We have our top floor, our next floor, and the floor below. Let's go right click layer options and show snap others. Now you can see all three stories, my foundations and my two living stories. But what we need to do is to get these from this location in our design layer, we need to get them onto our site. Let's go back to our site model and have a look. There's our site model and I don't know if you noticed but we've got our background as well that we don't want to see. So window, palettes and navigation palette. There's a navigation palette just down here. We need to bring that up. I don't want to see my site scan at the moment. I don't want to see these other layers either, so I'll turn those off. We need to create a link from these stories here, or these floors, and put them onto this particular site model layer. The answer is to use a viewport. View in the menu bar and create viewport. We better name this viewport link to site model. What layer do we want to create this on? Our site model layer. What layers do we want to see? The third floor, the second floor, and the first floor. What classes do we want to see? At the moment they're all turned on, but make sure that space main is turned on, otherwise you won't see it. Click OK. And you might notice that the scale is now grayed out, the rendering is grayed out. Because it's a design layer viewport, we're linking the layers from our building onto our site, so the scale of the site takes precedence. Click OK, and there's our project. You might remember this is our car park area. So let's just pull that across, have a look at it. There it is down there. We need to lift that up to sit on the site. So let's just have a look. We've got some contours here we might be looking at. We could use center surface, AEC, terrain, 
center surface. Let's see what that does. And it brings it up to 43 and a half meters, roughly, which is probably about right. We can move that house. We can rotate it. So I'm just going to rotate it round. Where's our rotate tool? There it is. And we want that part there to be pretty much in that direction because that's where our car is going to drive in. So now we've got that, we can put it in about the right place. If you want to, you can hold down your shift key, use your arrow keys to nudge that house around. If I drag a copy of this house and I hold down the control key on a Windows machine or option key on a Macintosh, I can make a copy. So I've now got two copies. This one wants to be at 44 meters. And this one is at 43.5 meters. Let's have a look at this in 3D. So go to our flyover tool. Let's turn it round. And there are my two buildings. So there we are. Now I've just used my copy and paste. So I've got three floors that are all identical. But in reality, when we look at the third floor, let's go back to a top plan view. It still says foundations. It shouldn't do it. It should have a different name. It should be the top floor. And it shouldn't have this cutout. This is going to go over the car. So let's double click. Let's pull that down. So I'm going to pull that edge there. Pull it down to the bottom there. And then delete the handles that are in just in here. So delete that and delete that. So I've made a change to the top floor. What's that done to my site model? Let's have a look when we turn that round. Now you'll see it's updated. So you, now you can see the way the cars are going to come into this area. You can see the effect of the adjoining buildings. And what we need to do is to create some solar studies. So there are my buildings. We've got our heliodon. Now it's hard to see the heliodon at the moment, so I'm going to open up my palettes and open up my visualization palette right click, let's select on document. So it'll select that Heliodon. Down the bottom we can create a solar animation. Let's export our movie. Click OK. Click something for the time and the date. Click there. And we're going to export this with the best quality we can. So I'm saving this in the completed exercises folder. I'm just giving it the name and by default it gives it the city and the date. Click on save and now you can see it changing. So it does it really quickly because I'm using OpenGL rendering. I'm not using a really high quality rendering. But that should have created our movie for us. Let's open up that movie and have a look. There's our movie. Let's double click to open it. Here's our movie. So there's the time, there's the date. If I drag my cursor along, you'll see the time change and you'll also see the effect of the sun. So in the winter, in December, you can see that this area here is going to be fairly shady. We can also make a movie for the summer so we can see the effect of where our balconies are going to be, where our verandas are going to be and so on. So that gives us enough information to do our quick Balkan location. We can see our projects, we can see the surrounding buildings, and the next step would be to start to create some drawings and perspectives.